Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka Mono Blue Tron, back again with some alternate format analysis. I know, I know, it's not advanced 10 minute testing, but if you can wait until Wednesday, I can promise you some hot FA action. In the meantime, I'd like to take a look at an alternate format created by some friends at YGO Pro Deck, Trinity. Now before I get into the specifics, I'd like to explain the impetus for making this video. In the description, there's a link to a Reddit thread where a tournament for the format is being hosted. I urge you all to show up and see if you can break the hell out of it. If you're not clever enough to come up with any deck ideas on your own, well, I wasn't either, so that's what this video is about. So firstly, let's talk about the rules. Now there are three big ones for Trinity, thematic, right? The first is that you are only permitted three summons of effect monsters a turn. While you can get around it by summoning normal or non-effect monsters, this usually prevents the insane board building that occurs in advanced. The second rule is that you are only permitted one copy of any card that's not on the forbidden or semi-forbidden list. This in effect makes it a Highlander format, although there are some sneaky ways around it. The exception of these are the unbound cards, which are usually cards that have the same name as other cards or require copies of themselves to function like Volcanic Shell. Finally, there is a new deck size limit down to 30 cards from 40, but the sneakiness comes into play here because for every 5 cards you go over the 30 card limit, you can include one copy of a card on the semi-forbidden list or a second copy of any unlimited card. And that's it! The format's super strange, there's a priority placed on individually strong monsters like Thunder King Ryo, while board building combos are either inaccessible because of the summon limit or aren't repeatable because there's only one copy of their boss. It's much more resource intensive than advanced, and while I was initially skeptical, I ended up loving it. So let's walk through a deck of my own as well as one that my much smarter Discord had figured out as well. First up is this hero deck of my own creation. Now it kind of resembles OCG hero, if only because Stratos and Shadow Mist are both available and are both at one. This list does a good job of both displaying a linear deck as well as showcasing some of the more powerful cards in the format. We're playing Honesty Neos, Stratos, Blazeman, Shadow Mist, Vion as our hero package, then Fairy Tail Luna, who is very good in a world where you can't ever prevent her effect from going off, Armageddon Knight to bin the Shadow Mist, Goblinburg, and Tin Goldfish, as well as Summoner Monk for obvious reasons, then our hand traps, Ash Blossom, and Ghost. Ogre. For spells, we have an E Emergency Call, Polymerization, Rhoda, A Hero Lives, Pot of Avarice, Upstart Goblin, Foolish Burial, Cosmic Cyclone, Scapegoat, Premature Burial, and both mask changes so we can have two targets. For traps, we have this copy of Heavy Dust Storm, Bottomless Trap Hole, Quaking, Mirror Force, Torrential Tribute, Back to the Front, Floodgate Trap Hole, Oasis of Dragon Souls, Call of the Haunted, and Our Solemns. In the extra, we've got Dian, Adoration, Anki, Divine Wind, Acid, and our semi-forbidden card, and the reason we're playing 35, Dark Law. After that, we've got Dark Rebellion, Castell, Exiton Knight, Laval Chain, Rafflesia, Firewall, Gaia Saber, Decode Talker, and Link Haribo. So I took this pile out to a little mini tournament yesterday and figured I would show you one of my more interesting matches. Our opponent for this game is playing... <laughs> Cosmo Time Lord Gradle, and you can tell that there are a couple of episodes of Rick and Morty ahead of us as far as IQ goes because they understand the format at a level that we just don't. They're playing multiple cards that all lose to the same card. Things like Scrap Iron Scarecrow, Gradle Impact, and Fiendish Chain all lose to Mystical Space Typhoon, but because we can only play one copy, potentially two if we're also playing a Cosmic Cyclone, we're not going to be able to answer everything. Our opponent gets to start, so they're going to normal summon this Cosmol Wicked Witch, which is a very powerful monster in and of itself. A that is impervious to destruction by normal means, so we'll have to figure something out. We thankfully do have access to Dark Law, we'll see how powerful it's going to be. We're going to use the effect of Shadow Mist and immediately trigger that Torrential Tribute. They're then going to use Cosmo Wicked Witch to prevent her death. That's pretty powerful, but doesn't stop me from setting this Quaking Mirror Force and hoping for the best. Our opponent draws into a Gradle, which is pretty good because it's another card they can't add from their deck to their hand. Then in main phase two, they're going to set it. Uh, they're going to use Impact to get the final Gradle, and now we just have to chew through these. Now one way we can do that is by using Dark Law, so we're going to Premature Bear out our Shadow Mist, get the Mass Change 2, go into Dark Law to attack that set card, we'll do so, and ugh, it's Scrap Iron Scarecrow, and uh, I mean, uh, what are we going to do about that? Our opponent unfortunately has an active Gradle Impact, so they'll go ahead and destroy Dark Law and one of their Gradles, then start attacking. We'll flip over this Quaking Mirror Force, preserving life points to some degree, and hoping that they're not going to have any other monsters to back it up with. Now, we have a Cosmic Cyclone, but I really don't want to commit it onto any of the individual spells or traps on the board. I, I like, don't want to waste it on Scrap Iron Scarecrow 
years of playing against the card have conditioned me into thinking it's not very good. Our opponent's going to activate this copy of Gradle Impact targeting his last Gradle. We'll go ahead and fire off the Cosmic Cyclone. I know there's no real reason to hit Gradle Impact at this point, so I go ahead and hit the Scrap Iron Scarecrow. We still have the ability to make some plays happen. We'll start with Goblinburg. They're going to Fiendish Chain, but we will chain Mass Change too, so we get that effect off and get a copy of Dian, one of the better targets uh, in our extra deck. We'll go ahead and get a Polymerization as well, in case we ever assemble Adoration. I can't imagine a world in which we do, and start chewing through these set cards. Now, this last card is a Gradle, and I don't want to lose Dian, so we're going to have to figure out a way to uh, get around it, and unfortunately, I can't think of any right now, so I'll just pass it back. Our opponent draws into Fairy Tale Luna, which is a just an incredibly powerful card. They'll attack over one of our monsters, the one in defense mode, so they don't get honested. We'll attack, and uh, that prompts the effect. Uh, not particularly strong. They'll go ahead and fire off this heavy dust storm, destroying our bottomless trap hole, which was our answer, as well as one of their now destroyed cards. And after that, uh, it looks like we're actually under the Yada Lock. Uh, Yadagrasu is, of course, legal in this format, and while we do have a Foolish Burial, we have nothing good to bin, and we concede. So for game two, you can see that our opponent has drawn into more of the Time Lord half of their deck. They've also drawn a copy of Gradle Impact once again, but thankfully don't have too many things left in their deck to fetch. We've opened a copy of Goblinburg and Shadow Mist, which is excellent, but a mask change as well, so MC2 is going to have to pull its own weight. We get to start because we lost, so we'll go ahead and Normal Summon Goblinburg, get ourselves a Shadow Mist, add an MC2, set MC1, and this Mirror Force. Our opponent's going to start by uh, watching us make Dark Law and then immediately destroying it with Gradle Impact. Uh, Ugh, really brutal, but ugh, we just don't have any repeatability because we only have one copy of Dark Law. It just sucks that now Dark Law will forever be in my graveyard until I figure out some way to finagle him out of there. We draw into a Tin Goldfish so we can make a rank four, and I'm pretty excited to do so here just because I really don't want to have to deal with the repeatable destruction of Gradle Impact. We'll go ahead and attack over this copy of Goblinburg and pass it back. Our opponent is going to normal summon a Mataion in order to shuffle this sucker back into our deck. I'm not too concerned about it. This is uh, not a big deal since we still have a Stratos in our hand, and I'm not really willing to commit the Stratos to board because we don't really have a lot of monsters left. We'll set this Solemn Strike, which turns out to be very good because our opponent's going to activate the effect of Zafion, which otherwise would just end the game on the spot. Instead, we'll just get to look at Zafion for another turn. Solemn Strike is not the most elegant answer, but it is one. We draw into an Ash Blossom, and I'm thinking, well, I don't know, I'm fine drawing into hand traps. Honestly, my opponent's got to do something at some point. They'll go ahead and normal summon Ryo, and I really can't beat that card, especially with a Stratos, so I'll go ahead and activate the Mirror Force in order to destroy it. We draw into a Torrential Tribute, and I'm pretty happy to continue to see these, like, big board wipes against this deck. Our opponent normal summons Fairy Tale Luna, another card that we can't beat, so we'll Torrential in response. We draw into a third hand trap, and I figure, oh, it's kind of now or never on the Stratos. We get ourselves the last hero in our deck, Honesty Neos, and then pass it back to our opponent after doing 1800. Our opponent draws a Fiendish Chain, which is not ideal. They're going to go for a Magical Scientist play, but thankfully we have Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, so they're just going to have to do one Thousand Eyes Restrict, which of course we can chain a Mass Change 2-2 in order to make Divine Wind. They'll set one card and pass it back. We're going to attack in, and ugh, it's Fiendish Chain. We had lethal, ugh. We'll set one card and pass it back. Our opponent's going to find a Torrential Tribute, set that sucker and pass it back as well. We find a Back to the Front, which is potentially pretty good in a world where they get over our Divine Wind, so we'll pass it back again. Our opponent is going to pass it back again, and we draw into Giant True Nade. Oh my god, what a broken card. We'll go ahead and attack, and then in damage step, Honesty Neos to win. So we're in game three. Our opponent gets to go first, and they have a couple of Time Lords, which is unnerving, as well as a Yadagarasu, which could be a very big problem, and a Doom Caliber Knight that I'm not entirely sold on. They're going to go ahead and normal summon that Doom Caliber Knight, set that copy of Scrap Iron Scarecrow, and pass it back. Now remember, Doom Caliber is mandatory, so we can trigger it by normal summoning the Tin Goldfish, then we'll chain Mask Change 2 so that we can go into Acid and destroy that set card. Now, as far as things we destroy with Acid goes, uh, Scrap Iron Scarecrow is pretty high up on that list, so I'm feeling pretty good about myself. Unfortunately, my opponent does have the out. They'll go ahead and normal summon this Camion, attack into our Acid, then shuffle that sucker back and deal 500 to me. I don't have to actually deal with the Camion, of course, because it's going to get shuffled back, but this Armageddon Knight could have won us the game if it was anything but Forbidden Chalice. If we could send Shadow Mist, we could bring it back the next turn with Call of the Haunted, get heroes to our hand, we'd just be off to the races, but unfortunately we can't, and our opponent is able to oh, get out Zafion and shuffle all of our back row into our deck. They'll go ahead and do just that, sending the Tin Goldfish that we, I guess, BM into play back to our hand, and who this is not looking good against a player that has Yadagarasu in their hand. That gets shuffled back, and they'll go ahead and activate the effect of Time Maiden to get Kami on the normal summon Yadagarasu. They will shuffle Armageddon Knight with... Oh! 
Well, I guess they were a little more afraid of that set card. Well, that really wastes the Yatagarasu turn, but still puts me in a pretty precarious position. We have a copy of uh, Bottomless, but Bottomless really doesn't do a whole lot against Yada. They'll go into a copy of Magical Scientist and a Thousand Eyes Restrict, then afterwards a Sylvan Princess Sprite, which I guess we have to Bottomless and draw some out to Yada. We do! We draw Fairy Tail Luma, and suddenly they're kind of in the hot seat as far as life points go, but... Our opponent top decks Fissure, and well, that's really all she wrote. I can't beat this Yada Lock, especially not with Giant True Nate of all things. So, kind of a heartbreaking couple of games, but only so many decks can beat Yada at all, and apparently we are not one of them. It sucks so bad knowing that Dark Law is so unavailable. I've been spoiled by access to 3 and 2 for so long that I forgot what it felt like to go without. Still, long interactive games, and the deck felt okay despite its mediocre result. Don't worry, the other deck we're taking a look at is much better. This is from Burrito Man 93 in my Discord. It's called Yang Zing Shadal Performage Dino, and that's a mouthful. This deck combines four different strategies, rolling in the hype from dolls and dinos from paper into a format where you can still make Dang Long. We have Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, Overraptor, Miscellaneousaurus, Jurak Aeolo, Giant Rex, Dagoran. Then Shadal, Beast, Falco, Dragon, Squamata, and Horgehag. And by the way, type a Dewey joke in the comments and you're blocked. Yang Zing, Sunai, Bian, Jintao, and Chiwin, Damage Juggler, Hat Tricker, Thrasher, Draconet, Galaxy Serpent, Ash Blossom, Ghost Ogre, and Effect Veiler. For spells, we have Instant Fusion, Yang Zing Path, Mind Control, Ultimate Evolution Pill, Shadal Fusion, Fossil Dig, Terraforming, Gold Sarcophagus, Mystical Space Typhoon, Cosmic Cyclone, Premature Burial, Chicken Race, Pseudo Space, and then for traps, evenly matched, which is somehow legal, sinister shadow games, nine pillars of the Yang Zing, and solemn warning. In the extra, we have Shekinaga, Construct Baby, Winda, Norden, Thousand Eyes, Baxia, Yazi, Danglong, Black Rose, Chanbara, Herald, Tornado Dragon, Exoton, Laval Chain, and Gaia Saber. Our Danglong and Ultimate Conductor are our semi forbiddens, which is why we're playing 40 cards. So we're actually casting this match from the other side of the table. We're going to pretend to be the smart, intellectual individual who brought dinos, and not the mouth-breathing moron who brought heroes, and may or may not be me in real life. We get to go first, which is always excellent. We'll go ahead and fire off this fossil dig to get a soul-eating overraptor, normal summon it and use its effect to get a miscellaneousaurus, use its effect to send it to graveyard, then its two effect to get a Jurakaeolo from deck going into Danglong, getting a nine pillars of the Yang Zing, and binning a Chiwin. Our opponent's going to go ahead and draw. They're going to start by Cosmic Cycloning this set copy of nine pillars. We'll chain it because we do want to get the effect of our Danglong, getting ourselves a BN as well as the Chiwin, so we can go into a Herald of the Arclight on our opponent's turn. Our opponent's afterwards going to use Foolish Burial to get Shadow Mist to graveyard, then add a copy of Vion to hand. When they go to add polymerization, we'll say that's enough, and Ash Blossom them, then go into Herald of the Arc Light. They'll set two and attack into our thousand defense, indestructible by battle monster. Uh, okay. We'll go ahead and banish two for an ultimate conductor Tyranno. They go ahead and go into Dark Law, I think assuming that the game is over and that it's time to BM, but these games are not over until they're over. They're going to regret that decision. We'll go ahead and negate this copy of Fairy Tail Luna. That is a problem card and does defeat ultimate conductor Tyranno, so we'll go ahead and negate it just to be safe. We'll attack in for 3,500 points of damage, and even if we're not going to win off this card individually, it sure is doing a lot. Our opponent draws into a Quaking Mirror Force, sets it, and passes it back. They now have two Mirror Forces set, so when we attack, they'll go ahead and flip one of them, destroying our ultimate conductor Tyranno. Thankfully, we do have a lot of really important things set, so we should be fine. We're going to go ahead and draw into a copy of Cosmic Cyclone. We'll flip up this Shadal Dragon, and then attack for 1,900. They'll try and block with the Call of the Haunted, but lo and behold, Cosmic Cyclone really answers that card well. They'll take 19, go to 5, we'll set one and pass. It is, of course, Shadal Beast, which is a huge monster. We'll go ahead and flip that sucker up. Uh, unfortunately, they do have a Quaking set, but Quaking is not particularly good against flip effect monsters, and after bidding a couple more Shadals, we are in business. We're going to set one and pass it back. Our opponent's going to draw into a reinforcement of the army, getting themselves a Stratos. They'll go ahead and normal summon it, use its effect. We will Valor it just in case. And then, of course, they will attack into our set monster, since it has 1700 defense. We'll draw two cards, and we do get to use the effect of Shadal Falco, so this game should be just about wrapped up. We'll go ahead and flip up Shadal Falco, use its effect in order to get back a Shadal Beast. Then we'll normal summon this Draconet, go into high-speed Roid Chanbara, attack for 400, and prepare to win.
So for game two, you can see that our opponent has drawn exclusively into cards they boarded. They're going to start out by setting this prohibition, calling Soul Eating over Raptor. That's going to screw up our Fossil Dig, but maybe we can still make something happen. We'll activate this copy of Shadal Fusion, and ugh, Soul Drain. Well, that's fine, I guess. Shekinaga is just going to have to be good enough. We'll get in for 2600 and uh, hopefully be face for a couple of turns. Our opponent draws into a reinforcement of the army. They'll go ahead and set this copy of Shadow Mist, then pass it back, but we might be able to cheese out a victory. We'll use Mind Control, then Fossil Dig our way into a Miscellaneous Saurus, Banish that set card in case it's a battle trap and get attacking for 1800 and 2600 exactly. Fast match against a deck that I think we're not actually supposed to beat. I love this deck. You get to do so many broken things. You get to play Construct, you get to play Perform Ages, I mean, you get to play Dang Long, Yang Zings are always a nice touch. I mean, I only hope it's as consistently consistent as it was in those two games. So that's that. Hopefully it gives you a little starting point for the format. Like I said, check out the link below and sign up. I have to school you all with the secret brew I've been hiding. If you want to see me play the decks I make on this show on stream, I'm on twitch.tv slash monobluetron every Tuesday and Thursday from 10 to midnight Eastern Standard Time. I'll be back with normal Yu-Gi-Oh! on Wednesday.